You see, you ask for for enlightenment. You ask for awakening, and you get it. And you think this is great. This is what all these people who you thought were fools are speaking about. I can't believe how much bliss I am in. I can't see anything other than love. I want to keep this, and you realize that you cannot keep it because you are it. So then there is this confusing state. I'm in love with myself. I'm in love with everything. But no one loves me. And the mind is speaking again. You see, the mind is speaking. And like I say, mind is everything. So your partner, your your children, your parents—they've given you this space for you to. Realize the truth, and now they want you back as the person you were before. Now you can spend the rest of your life worshiping God, Christ, and yourself, Buddha. And that's what you have. That's what. That, that, there is no choice, then you see, because this love for this one that gives you this freedom is immense. Or you can try and balance this with the love of your family and your friends. Fifty-fifty. Or you can go one or the other way. You can forget all this enlightenment and get back to work and, and do these things. But the point of this is. Well, this dilemma. You have this choices that you feel that you can make now. You couldn't make these choices before. You see, you're free. That's what enlightenment is. You become as free as a bird. And what happens? You go either way. I can't say which way I went. But what remains with any of these ways? It doesn't matter whether you choose Christ, God. You choose your family and this person and this mind state again, or you try and balance them both. Whatever way. You are still enlightened. You have no interest for anything. And when I say no interest, you worship your family. You are in love with them. You worship God in Christ. You are in love with them. Or you try and balance your life with both, and you are in love with them. This disinterest is that. You know that anything that is going on is going on by itself. You see people walking, and you love them walking. There's nothing you can do to improve their walk or improve their life. You see, everything is perfect. Your loved ones can do no wrong. No one can do wrong. No one is actually doing any right. But everyone is trying. Everyone seems to be trying. To do something out of the ordinary, and you don't know what ordinary is anymore. This is the the sage. You see, you don't mind anything. 
you don't really mind what's going on, be it good or bad. And anything that goes on, be it good or bad, you can ignore. Within reason, you see. Within the reason of this natural state of a human. If someone's injured, you don't ignore. It's natural, you see. It's an impulse. You see that a country can build millions of towers. And you look and you say, well... Or for what purpose? There's no even justification if you were to ask the question. Because the one who gave the answer and said we need it for so many, we want to be a powerful country or we want to put offices in there, you say, I don't understand that, you see. <laughs> what you realize, enlightenment, the true realization from enlightenment is something See, I don't want to use the word God because you'll have a picture in your head, but you can call it whatever you like. But something has created this. Something has created this as it is. And it, as it is, is miraculous. It is beyond all human mind knowledge to understand how this came about. There's no need, reason to know how this came about, whether it was a God or whether it was yourself. There is no reason. It is absolutely perfect as it is. You can trim the bushes in your garden to make them a, a shape. You achieve nothing. You have changed something for a mind-based pleasure, a an obsessiveness, a compulsiveness. The enlightened one sees everything as perfect in any shape, any form, any size, anywhere. So that there can be no interest, you see, because interest is in changing something. Interest is in creating something. Interest is in making something. Interest is in doing something. Interest is in experiencing something. Fully enlightened, you will not take any pleasure from doing anything ever again. Because the pleasure is always there. You cannot improve this wondrous essence that sails through your body every moment of the day. Even when pain comes, there is this essence of love, of perfectness. I don't know what you expect from this enlightenment. This body and mind only sees the same. Everything is the same. You, you can try and love, but you can't do it. Because everything is love, you see. Every, love oozes from every single thing, every plant, every insect, every animal. Sometimes your emotions and senses as a human being take over and you weep for something with love. It could be Christ, it could be a rose. It could be a part of a movie. You can still participate with the emotion side of things. Because that's all there is, is emotions. Experiences and actions are only here to allow you to experience your emotions. Without experiences and actions, you cannot understand your emotions. And once you overcome your experiences and actions through enlightenment, only emotions exist, you see. The emotions were always there. That just that we thought we needed experience to trigger them off. I 
I say this, don't awaken. Don't try and force awakening. If you're really interested in your mind, and you're interested in this life of a doer, a builder, an improver, this God's not angry at all of this. He's just confused at why you would want to improve something that is the most wondrous piece of art, this universe that gives everything. It repeats everything. It reflects everything. It maintains everything. It changes everything. I sometimes disappear. Actually, at most times I'm disappeared in this stateless state. And I can't find words to describe it. I can't find words to describe myself. The one that dwells within this body and mind. I can't find my, my name, my body. But, but that's not a problem, you see, because I know I am here. That's what I am here as. I may know that, but I cannot even think about sharing that because I cannot find the words again to describe what I am. And what this is. I say that enlightenment is to be free. But your mind may say, I want freedom. But then it says, I don't want to be free from that though. I don't want to be free from being a man. I don't want to be free from enjoying my work. That's not freedom, you see. You can only be free or not free. You can participate in this life and experience spells of human mind freedom. But it's not true freedom, you see. True freedom means to let every single thing go. I remember I wanted to die. I wanted to die so badly that it was granted. And what happened was this I that wanted to die was not the one that had this thought. It was the ego mind, I, this fake I that wanted to die. I knew immediately as this body disappeared and I, the one that was in it rose, that there is no such thing as death. It's only the mind that dies. It's only the mind and the body that dies when the body has had enough. But to actually want to die is not you. It's this ego, this identity, this state that encapsulates you and tortures you. I became free, you see. I, this ego I, became free. It escaped from this net of fish. One in a few escaped. I met Christ. I sat in a forest for weeks with no sign of me. I couldn't find me. I was looking in the forest and I couldn't find me. I couldn't find the person that I was. I couldn't find anything but trees. And they spoke. As they did for Buddha. As they did for Christ. When I merged with Christ, poor, none of this became of any importance. This is a picture, a play, a facade, some call it an illusion. But it's simply a lesson. This world is your teacher. It's teaching you that it's exactly equal.
that when you differentiate anything within this world, you're still in class, you see? You're still learning. You're still learning the most simplest, the most simplest lesson. Everything was created as one, and everything is one, and everything will remain one for the eternal time that this earth exists as what it is. I can only leave you with the words that enlightenment reaches the same stage as every other one who experiences enlightenment, true, true enlightenment. What is, you see, the truth is, everything is. You are what you are. There is no descriptive thing to separate it, you see. When you say everything is form, you ignore the formless. When you say everything is love, you ignore the anger and the hate. And this is part of it, you see. Everything is part of it as one. When you reject, when you go outside this in-between state, this stateless state, this placeless place, you become trapped in a journey of a path, you see, a path of goodness, a path of kindness. You accept everything. You accept everything as it is. Accept everything as it is. That is my mantra. Accept everything as it is and trust that what is beyond this thing that it is. It's perfect. It's God. So from the most disinterested sage, from the most unknowable thing that knows everything about nothing. <laughs> so from the one with no name, no size, no measurement, no appearance, no sex, no specific qualities, no substance. I say nothing. I leave you with nothing. I leave you with this thought. If you want to see truth, you have to give up everything, even the most interesting, even the most loving. You have to surrender to what is. And when you surrender to what is, everything becomes enhanced and wonderful and enlightened and beautiful and joyful and blissful and emptiness is you know, and that's what you wanted, you see. But within this emptiness, things grow. But when they grow, they grow differently, you see. The rebirth that you are experiencing is a new rebirth where everything is absolutely still. Everything is the same. And I am simply part of this everything. But in reality... I am is the whole of everything, the holiness of everything, and the oneness of everything, the godliness of